Hello, I'm Gary Cleveland with Cleveland Helicopter Services here in Plymouth, Indiana. And in this free helicopter ground school video, we will discuss auto rotations in a helicopter. An auto rotation in a helicopter is what saves us when the engine or transmission fails to operate. In the event of an engine or transmission failure, the helicopters are designed to allow the engine or transmission to cease movement and the rotor system to continue movement via the sprag clutch. It is important that the pilot makes the appropriate adjustments in a very short time frame in order to initiate the auto rotation in the event of an emergency. For the purpose of this video, we will discuss counterclockwise rotating uh, helicopter rotor systems as opposed to clockwise helicopter rotor systems. Uh, counterclockwise would be such as the uh, Robinson products, the Enstrom, the Schweitzer. Many training helicopters are, are counterclockwise. Uh, the clockwise rotating systems out there, uh, for example, would be Rotorway or uh, the Cavery, uh, which is becoming uh, more popular in the States now. The only difference is going to be uh, which pedal you push to reduce the pitch on the tail rotor. Uh, so we'll be talking about a counterclockwise rotating helicopter and you'll just need to know that it will be the opposite pedal when you're talking about a clockwise rotating helicopter. Regardless of which way the rotor system turns, there are three regions that you need to know in the rotor system during an auto rotation. So this is a top view of a spinning rotor system. The center is referred to as the stalled region. The next section out from the stalled region is referred to as the driving region. And the outer area of the rotor system is the driven region. You need to understand that for the examiner. On check ride day, he'll ask about the regions of the rotor system. And you can read up on it also in the helicopter flying handbook. If the engine quits or the transmission quits in a counterclockwise rotating helicopter, the nose will immediately yaw to the left. When the nose yaws to the left and the pilot senses that the engine or transmission has failed, the first thing that's going to be noted is an immediate drop in RPM. The RPM will degrade rapidly, more rapidly in an R22 or rotorway than it would say in a Enstrom with a heavy rotor system. These RPMs are dropping and the pilot must do something to stop that immediately. The first thing he does is lower the collective all the way. He will also make an apt cyclic input. He will need to add right pedal. If you are in a clockwise rotating helicopter, the nose is going to yaw to the right instead, causing you to have to add left pedal. Now in the auto rotation, the RPM is very critical. If you are operating a Robinson product or a Rotaway product, the needles are going to swing from the left and the right in your dual tack. 
and when you're operating the helicopter under normal conditions, they're going to be joined in the middle. When the helicopter stops running, the engine tack will go to the bottom, and then it's the pilot's job to keep the RPM in the operating range with, with the rotor tack. Now, an Enstrom has a little bit of a different dual tack. Both needles are swinging from the middle. It has a short needle for rotor and a longer needle for the engine. And so when the engine or transmission fails with this type of tack, it is important to keep the rotor needle in the operating range while the engine needle falls back to the bottom, to zero. Let's talk about how this is done. After the initial entry into the auto rotation, now the helicopter is approaching the ground at a good rate, likely um, between 1500 and 2000 feet per minute, depending on the helicopter. The pilot needs to pick a spot to safely land the helicopter. This is where day-to-day -day operations should affect the pilot in attempting to fly over areas where he or she has a spot at all times. There are times when you will operate the helicopter and there is no spot but you should try and keep a spot as much as possible, even if it calls for altering your route slightly to get around a large wooded area, um, to keep a road in sight at night. After the initial entry, the pilot's looking for a spot. Now it's important to control that RPM. If the RPM goes low, The pilot can lower the collective more. If the collective is all the way down, he could come aft on the cyclic. Either one of these will increase RPM, either lowering collective or coming aft on the cyclic. If the RPM goes high, past the operating range to the top side, the pilot can raise collective the appropriate amount or go forward on the cyclic. One or both will accomplish lowering the RPM. Now one thing they uh, taught us at the Robinson safety course was that when teaching auto rotations to a student, not right off the bat, but into the training some, it is a good idea to have the student control the RPMs in some of the auto, rota auto rotations just with the collective and then in some auto rotations just with the cyclic. So they get a fill for the fact that each control will make a difference in the RPM. And once that correlation is learned, both of them together, the collective and cyclic inputs together, are very effective in controlling the RPM during the auto rotation. Depending on your helicopter, the ideal speed and the max glide RPM can vary. So I urge you to look at the POH for the helicopter you are operating and see what the range and speed is for your helicopter. It is very typical that 70 
knots will be a good speed to hold in the auto rotation. It is a good idea, no matter what helicopter you're in, to have 60 knots in the flare. So the flare is at the end of the auto rotation. Here's the runway. We're practicing these with a CFI on board. We're practicing these at the runway, just in case when you roll the engine down during the practice auto rotation, if the engine quits, we're all set up on a runway and not over an area of unknown terrain. When we practice these, a straight in will be from 500 AGL. You're going to enter with lower collective, right pedal, some aft cyclic, entering at 75 knots. After you make these inputs, you should be right at 70 knots. You'll hold the RPMs, making very minor changes if needed. One thing people will do is the RPMs might go to the top of the operating range. They see that and then they pull the collective up a little too far. Now they're at the bottom of the range and they're pushing it back down. Very minor adjustments, just like when you learn to hover. Don't overcorrect. Very minor adjustments to keep the RPM in the operating range. When you get to about treetop level, you will do a gentle flare. Gentle flare, I mean you're going to come back on the cyclic slightly to start a gentle flare. You'll start losing some forward speed. Then as you get closer to the runway, six to ten feet you would do a more aggressive flare the aircraft will continue to settle and prior to the tail striking the runway level the ship during the level process join the needles so that when the ship is level you can bring the aircraft back into a hover by joining the needles i mean add the throttle get the needles joined back in the green, the operating range, so that when the ship is level, you're back into a hover. There's a lot of pedal work as you recover from the practice auto rotation into the hover. And that's something that you'll have to work on with your instructor. I urge you never to practice auto rotations as a uh, student pilot during the solo. Many times your instructor will put a limit on that anyway. Uh, even as a new private pilot, I would encourage you to get an instructor to accompany you uh, when, when you decide to practice auto rotations. So I hope that uh, this video is helpful for you. And if you have a video in mind that you'd like me to do in the near future, uh, send me an email or a text um, or leave it in the comments and I'll get it that way. Uh, keep in mind that my videos are not edited. It's just me teaching you on the whiteboard as if you were right here in Plymouth, Indiana, preparing for your check ride. And if you like the video, click the like button. If you want to be notified of videos in the future as I put them out, uh, click the subscribe button and the bell to be notified. My plan is to uh, regularly add to my channel, uh, making it uh, eventually a one-stop shop free helicopter ground school. We'll see you in the next video.